Feel good? Okay. Uh, I've had several questions about this, and I want to really try to do a series on it if I can, uh, unless I get bored with it, and then I won't do the one message. You just have to bear with me. I'm sorry. If I get to next week and it sounds lame, we won't do it. But here's the thing is how, you know, everybody can open their Bible this morning, and you're not going to be able to flip to a page that says, Chris, thou shalt. Right. You know, do this. It's not in there. And so people are always wondering what to do, especially when we become seniors in high school and in different stages of life. What should I do? Is talking to Ethan about his future this morning. You know, and, and, and the deal is, is you, you want to hear from God. Right. Because that's the smartest thing you can do. Right. right. And so I'll talk to you about the voice of God and how to hear the voice of God this morning. How I many okay. well, that would be beneficial that to you? Way. This is part one, okay? How do I know that it's God? Okay. That's the first question I get. Okay. I had one guy, he told me something really crazy one day, and I questioned it because, well, it was crazy. <laughs> okay. And his response was, I know the voice of God. I'm thinking, I also know the voice of crazy. Okay. And he's not crazy. So anyway, we'll get into that later. <laughs> it's later. In John chapter 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. John 1, 14 later says, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory is the only begotten of the Father. The first thing you need to understand is that there's people right now that in this room, you've, you've knelt by your bed or you've gone somewhere and you've prayed, Lord, speak to me. And this book is sitting two feet away. Oh, okay, good. Lord, give me an answer. And here is right here what he's telling us is that everything that we have that exists, the seat you're sitting on, the air we're breathing, began as the Word of God. The Word of God. He said he's exalted his Word even above all that of his name. Meaning I am God, the very God, but I put my Word in control of the universe. Yes. He will not go against his own Word. His Word does not, it, it, you know, it's infallible. It's unchallengeable. And then one day, Jesus stepped out of the crowd and John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. And the Word had put on flesh. Yes. It's still the same Word. Yes. If you will, Jesus was everything from Genesis to Malachi, walking around in the flesh. Wow, That's big right there. Yes. If you want to get really weird, we're everything from Matthew to Revelation. Walk around. But I'll go there right the next time. Hebrews 11.3 says, By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God. We built a house in 2001, and we went out there and we watched them frame that house up, and it took shape, and I can tell what it was once they began to frame it. It took shape, and it became a house, even though it wasn't a complete house, it was the structure that was filled in by everything else that became the home we're living in, and everything we have in this earth okay. that you live and, and move and have your being in, and it's been established and has its origin in the Word of God. Therefore, the Word of God has dominion and authority over everything. Okay. So the things which are seen are not made with things that are, that are visible. You want some stuff? It's just like a man's testimony. And I talk to people all the time. It's like, well, they, we all want the promises in the Word of God. And we, you know, a lot of them are in there like healing. It's like, woo, I want to be healed. Well, you know, because I don't really have anything to do with healing. Jesus healed me, okay? Yes. But when I want promotion or I want something to happen down here, All right. when Jesus needed money to pay his taxes, it didn't flutter down from the sky. That's right, okay. He told Peter, go catch a fish and take the coin out of his mouth. In fact, no, it was where everything Jesus needed in the earth was in the earth. Yeah. Okay. Let me say that again. Everything you need in the earth is in the earth. Yeah. It's not going to float down from the sky. It's already, a lot of it's in your house, in your hand, and you can't see it yet because you don't, you don't value it. I talked about that last week. Yes. And so the things you need will not be made with things you can see. The things you need will be made with things you can't see. And their origin is going to be in the Word of God. Amanda needed a promotion. She, sold, she planted seed, something that she had control over. She put her finances and wrote on there seed for this thing and put it in the earth and watched it, how it came up. Well, I just, you know, that's how I want to TV preachers. No, it sounds like the Word of God. Yeah. You know, I don't care if an idiot stands up and says it. It's still the Word of God. Yeah. Next page. I'm not saying they're not weird. 
<laughs> Don't go and say that. Second Corinthians 1 20 says, For all. If I say all. Oh. I looked that word up in the Greek and it means. Oh. That's right. All the promises of God in him are yes. He's already said yes before he even gave me the promise. Yes. So here's a little clue for it. If it says whosoever in here, any promise in this book, anything that's been guaranteed to you, that any child, child of God, that it's been guaranteed to you, and you don't even have to ask God for it, he's already said yes about it. That's right. I'm not asking him for it, I'm thanking him for it. You yeah. see the difference? Yeah. And in him, amen. What does amen mean? It means we can open our eyes and agree, right? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> amen means so be it, or Kevin is done. When you say amen, you're saying, I believe what I just prayed is finished. I'm not still looking for it. I believe it was established. I can't see it yet, but I know it's on the way. Touch your neighbor and say it's on the way. On the way. Now watch this. And it brings glory to God how? Through us. Why do we have to go through this whole deal? Why can't God just anticipate our needs and they just show up in the mailbox? Because God gets glory through us walking by faith. God gets, uh, he gets broadcast and demonstrated to a world that sees what you're going through and watches how God is faithful to perform the word he promised you. Come yeah. back. Yeah. Yeah. It's faith. Yeah, so. John 3, 16. We know this is in there. Back in my day, let me get some water. This is a long story. Thank you, brother. Back in my day, when every pro football game, there was this guy back there with a rainbow afro. Yep. Yes. <laughs> Remember that guy? Yep. He always had John 3, 16 on Then he got arrested. Oh. Yeah. Sorry. I got it. He's trying to hit me up my water. I feel you, bro. <laughs> he said you need to go to the gym. I got it. No. Oh, no, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the most familiar verse of Scripture. We we buy into that notion for some reason. Any, any, any people that don't know anything about the Bible, when you say, for God so loved the world, yes, he did. <laughs> that he gave his only begotten son, hallelujah. That whosoever or whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We buy into that and we understand that that's true. Next page. But, so I want you to understand that if we buy into that truth, then 2 Peter 3, 9, this is the kill shot for Calvinism. Yeah. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. What is the will of God? That all come to repentance. That everybody be saved. Question, is everybody saved? No. Because you've got to choose what you heard in John 3, 16. Yes. You've got to activate it by selecting it and pulling it down for yourself. Yes. It's, in other words, all these promises are in the earth. But if you don't lay claim to one and pull it down, it's just not going to benefit you at all. Next page. Isaiah 55, 11. You know this is to be true. So, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return. If I say return. It can go forth and it can be void, but when it returns, it's not void. When we hear it and return it back to him, how does that John 3, 16 work? Well, I receive that he died for me and I confess with my mouth that he is Lord of my life. Now I'm taking that promise and I've sent it back to the origin. The connection is made and now the promise can flow to me. It shall not return to me more, but it shall accomplish what I please. It shall prosper the thing for which I said. So you need to know one thing for a fact. That if you, whatever you do, if you stand on and pray the word of God, you've got a guarantee that God says, this is going to work in your life. There's no mystery anymore. Next page. That's good. Hebrews 4, 1 and 2. Now this is, this is like this for all you lazy river folks. <laughs> There's a lot of folks that just think that their relationship with God is just getting in the inner tube and floating down the lake river. Whatever the good Lord wants. No, that's right. <laughs> and it's like, I tell you what the good Lord wants. He wants you to get off your butt yes. and get out of that inner tube and go to work. Yes, come on, Pastor. Tell the truth. <laughs> Don't put your prayer request on the board. Get your tail up and pray for yourself. Okay. Ah, it's not my gift. You know what? What is your gift? Uh, are you a mime? Because I can't see nothing else going on. Wow. 
It's got worse since I've been telling my offended. You know what I'm saying? Time to think of it. Yeah. Okay, sorry. I've been showing out since I was a little boy, I guess. Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, let us fear, lest any of you seem to come short of it. Why isn't everybody healed? Why isn't everybody saved? Why isn't everybody delivered? Why, why do bad things happen? Right. Well, I'll tell you why bad things happen because this earth is being ruled by a devil that's trying to kill us right now. Right. right. And, he's, and, and his time's about to run out and he knows that. Yeah. We've been sitting down here as ambassadors in a foreign land, equipped with the word of God, the sword of the spirit, filled with his spirit, given the same authority under his name to go do it, as if Jesus were here himself. Yes. In fact, some of you, if you could tell the devil was not really Jesus, he wouldn't know the difference. Right. I'm just me. <laughs> Don't tell him! <laughs> For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them, but the word which they heard did not profit them. Why? Because it wasn't mixed with faith. What does that mean? They didn't take what they heard and act on it. Right. Let's just make that really simple. Yeah. Let's make faith a hard thing. Faith is that you really believe what I said enough to do what I said. That's, that's, that's all faith is. Yeah. You know, if, if I told my kids uh, that tomorrow we're going to the beach, they're up ready to go. They believe what I said. Faith is them getting up out of bed and getting ready to go get in the car. They don't know how to drive. They don't even know which way the beach was. But if I said beach, they're in the car. Right. Pepe, all I got to do is just open the door. <laughs> Actually, all you got to do is open your door. He doesn't care what the car gets in. <laughs> Next page. What I should know about this is what's more important. Not how can I know, but what do I already need to know? The problem is, is that Jesus said, and that most people that have come through this century have said that, that his people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Okay. See, the devil's not going to stop. I, I, watched this, uh, I watched the movie a long time ago, and I can't remember what it was, but it had Jerry Reed in it. And it had uh, uh, Robin Williams. And Jerry Reed was a hit man. And Robin Williams thought he was playing. And they were in the woods. And Jerry Reed shot the, Robin Williams' barrel. And, and Robin Williams wanted a do-over. And I'm thinking, you know, the hit man's not going to give you a do-over. Uh -huh. And Satan's not going to give you a do-over. He doesn't care what you don't know. Right. He's not going to say, okay, hold on. Let's just do that again. Uh, and you, you know you need to rebuke me there. Okay, take two. Ready? Yeah, Ready? Right. Okay. Yeah. Now, he's not going to show you that. He's not going to tell you what your authority is. You've got to know what your authority yes. is, and you've got to yes. exercise it. Yes. Next page. So let's talk about that for a second. Okay. I preached on this a long time ago, and I'm thinking about reviving it. How many of you ready? Yes. The moment that you are born again. What does that mean? The moment that I received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, immediately 150, over 150 things become true about you that weren't true two seconds ago. Right. Now, whether or not you know these things and act on these things is up to you because you know what he told us? That we should work out our own salvation oh, right. with fear and trembling. Things you didn't deserve, things you didn't work for or earn were deposited in your new spirit because of what Jesus did at Calvary. Everywhere in the Bible, in the new covenant, where it says in whom or in him. You know what? The minute, became, the, minute, the minute I was born again and I'm now in him, whatever was true about Jesus just got true about me. Yes. Next page. Let's talk about that. Colossians chapter 1, verse number 12 through 14. That we give thanks to the Father who has how many of you went to school and had any English? Yeah. Has is a past tense verb. It means it's already happened. It's not something that's going to happen. Or one day he's going to get around to it. That means the moment Jesus stretched out his arms and said, it is finished, all this became true. The minute the blood hit the altar in heaven and we had access to it, now we have the same righteousness, power, and authority that Jesus had in this earth. He said he has qualified us to be protectors of the inheritance of the saints in the life. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed. You know what that means? Word means convey. It's the same power. He said we'd have to move a mountain. Yes, thank you, Lord. He has conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son yes. of His in whom we have redemption yeah. through His blood and yeah. the forgiveness of sin. So I'm look on that list God. and see what you're still trying to get that He's already yes. given to you. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. 
I'm qualified. I'm delivered. Yes. I've been conveyed into the kingdom. I have redemption and forgiveness yes. of sins. Man, that's a good day right yes. there. Yes, hallelujah. Next page. Thank you, Lord. Romans 8, 16. It's going to get ugly here now. <laughs> the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. That's not a good thing. That's not a good thing. Children of God. We're just doing the best we can. We're just doing the best we can. Man, you, you've got an attitude like, like you're kudzu. And you just happen to grow out of whatever God was doing. No, man, let me tell you something about you. You were done on purpose. You were formed on purpose out of the heart of God. He didn't make you like anybody else. He made you an original masterpiece. And he put you here just for this time. And he said, yes, no, are you, are you my child? If you can agree with me that you're my child, well, then hang on. Because if you're my child, you're my heir. That means everything that belongs to me, I'm going to pass down to you. And most people have to wait until the heir, until the, until the, the owner of the property dies. So Jesus went ahead and died and then raised himself from the dead so he could be the executor of his own will. Yes. Because not only am I an heir of God, right? I'm a joint heir. That means, oh, come on. Right? Yeah. That means yeah. whatever Jesus has, whatever belongs to him, now belongs to me. Yeah. Let me say that one more time. Yes. What belongs to Jesus? He's seated at the right hand of his Father. That means he's seated in authority. He's seated in executive authority over the universe. Guess what happened when he sat down? I sat down in him. I'm seated with him at the right hand of the Father. If he's got authority, I've got authority. Well, I know our brains just want to explode. Right? When we try to think about that, our little three-pound brain is just... But if you don't expand your thinking and believe that is the truth, then you're going to be fighting backwards the rest of your life. Next page. Then by with me, Galatians chapter 3, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. You know what the curse of the law is? The law! The curse of the law is that nobody can do it. The curse of the law is that the Ten Commandments were given. Uh, you know, on any given day, I could do one of them, right? Or do a handful of them, Kevin. But the problem is that the minute I break one of them, I'm guilty of all of them with no remedy. So we don't have an escape here or a do-over cue, a little error. When you break the law, you've broken the law. You're a lawbreaker forever. And there's no, the only thing that can ratify that, that offense is your blood. Yes. Uh, that was the curse of the law. Jesus said, here, how about that? Give me that law. <laughs> right? Give me all their sin, Lord. Right? Just everything's going to ever separate forever. Put it on me, Father. Because I don't have any sin, but I'm going to become sin for them. So that now, because I've taken yeah. their place, they can come and take my place. Yeah. Somebody yeah. help me today. Praise you, Lord. Having become a curse for us, for cursed is there one who hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. You know that the end goal of this thing is, is it wasn't even heaven. It was to get you back to where you were the temple of the Holy Spirit, that God could be one with us oh, again. Yeah. Yeah. That's good, man. Then, then we're already in heaven. Heaven's in us. That's right. Wow. In Christ. Wow. Yeah. Do I get this this morning? Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Next page, we're done. We're going to take communion yes, today sir. and solidify. Because this is the one, I just dare you, Christian. Christian, today's for you. Everything we pray today, because I'm going to tell you something, my young man. There's a John the Baptist sitting on this back seat. Okay. Here it is. Okay. I'm not, even, I'm, not, I'm not even prophesying this. I'm just examining what I see. I'm not calling things that be not. I'm calling things that are right now. I ain't even entered into the realm of faith. But I'm saying there's a sleeping giant in there that we're fixing to crack that thing yeah. open and you're going to come out of there and you're going to march on Tokyo. Yeah. Like Godzilla. I'm not kidding. But you got to receive it today. Raise your hands on right here. Father, I just pray in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. That I'm telling you in Jesus' name, years that the locusts have eaten and destroyed are being brought back to Christian. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, his name has been given to him for a purpose because that is who he represents. Lord God, I thank you that his heart is cleansed, his eyes are clear, his vision is known. And in Jesus' name, when you walk out of here today, the chains that ever held you are gone. Yes. 
Amen. First John 4, 17. This is for all of us. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. How can I have boldness in the day of judgment? I thought we were going to stand there and get our sins, you know, thrown up in our face. Hmm. Well, that was before I met Jesus. But when he said the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, he didn't put it in his parentheses to visit at a later time. Right. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. That's right. <laughs> he not only took my sin that I committed, he took the sins I might commit. Yes, yeah. Right. right. <laughs> Amen. That's like cheating, man. It sure is. Because yeah. it's his bat, his ball, and his field. And we'll swing that we hit in this case. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody help me today. Am I right? Don't you understand? He's a good God, a good Father. He wants you to win. He wants you to prosper. He wants you to have it all. And he'll keep doing it till you get it. He didn't send Jesus down here so you can see what you can't have. He sent Jesus down here so you can know what you can't have. Yes. Hallelujah. Because as he is. So we will be one day. Yes. No. 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 <laughs> so this, is, this is what you got to wrap your head around. He is. How is Jesus today? Is he sick? No. Is he discouraged? Is he poor? Is he, you know, is he bored? No. How is he? He's reigning and ruling and has all authority. And all. he's waiting for his enemies to be made his footstool. If he's the head, that means we're the... Let's do that again. If he's the head, then we're, we're the feet. I say it's on the end of your legs, rhyme with feet. That means if Satan goes under my feet, why are you carrying on a conversation with him? That's right. You don't need him at your level. Put him down there where he belongs. Yeah. Right? Come on with me today. Yes, sir. As he is, so are we where? In this world. In this world. Now, if you go look in the mirror, you may not look like that. what that would be true. But I'm not talking about what you see in the mirror. I'm talking about what you see in the mirror of his word. Because this is your mirror, not that thing in your bathroom. You don't go in there and ask him what, who you are. You go in here and ask him who you are. And he'll tell you who you are. And then you stand on it and believe it and confess it and say it over yourself until you can believe it. Because that's how you get there. How do I hear from God? Let's start this way. Because he don't say anything else until you've heard what he said already. Yes. Next page. Right. Second Peter, don't worry about that. Second Peter 119. We also have a more sure word of prophecy. You know what he's talking about? He's talking about when the heavens opened and a voice spoke and said, This is my beloved son. Man, how many of you prayed that prayer? Lord, I just wish you'd just speak in an audible voice and tell me what to do, right? Yeah. And there's people around you that claim they've heard an audible voice, and all it does is make you jealous and, and want to slap them in the name of Jesus. <laughs> because you've got an answer you really need, and nothing's open up for it, right? Yeah. So Peter said, we have something that's more reliable yeah. than if a voice spoke to you out loud. Because when the voice spoke from heaven, there were people standing there that thought it had thundered. And he said, we got a more sure word of prophecy. What is it? This word. Yeah. This written word. In fact, Paul comes back later. And he says, even if we are an angel come and tell you something different. If I come back tomorrow, me, Paul, if I come back to you tomorrow and change my story, don't even believe what I'm saying. What I'm telling you now is the word of God, the rainbow word of God. Yeah. Yeah. The heart of God spilled out. That we can energize, not in a book, but in an answer as we say it back then. Yes. Next page. So what has he already said about you is the answer you need to ask. Yes. The question you need to ask. Oh, Lord, I'm not super sick. It's okay. I, I know none of us have ever made that noise. <laughs> Sure He's right. saying, would the preacher shut up and bring me some milk already? <laughs> I heard it already enough. We got it. <laughs> we have three in three years. What's wrong with my shoulders? Pumpkin seed. 
He tried to go out and eat. Forget it. We, we had three and three ch car chairs at one time. We were in diapers for six straight years. You want to know why I'm all messed up? This is why. <laughs> My wife knew how to drive and reach back behind and tap the VCR to make it work because it all get all stalled out and do all that and still drive the car. Keep them going with, you know, uh, Mother Goose Gospel. And the child's capacity to watch the same video 83 times in a row. Yes. I've got parents that swore out hits, uh, put hitmen on the road to kill me because of my records. Because they want to hear, uh, you know, dead men walking 500 times in a row and worry for the Lord. I'm like, I'm sorry, I appeal to really small children. <laughs> I'm at the high level there, I guess. What has our God already said about you? It's time for you to review and find out what he has said about you. Because here's what we believe. Listen to me. I'm looking at a bunch of, of hardened soldiers that have been in this a long time. I get it. But the problem with us is we know what he has said and not what he is saying. We remember what he said, but we're not hearing him say it again afresh. And until you hear it in the now, it's not faith. It's just a memory. Next page. I want you to stand up and say this with me, and then we're going to take communion. I'm bringing these confessions back. Yes. Amen. This is good stuff. 